welcome to global navigation satellite system uh, and applications and in this uh, uh, lecture we will be discussing about the uh, Galileo which is a U European uh, GNSS system and uh, as you know that uh, uh, when the Russians developed their own, American developed their own so uh, European also thought that they should also have a, their own uh, positioning system. Uh, originally it was thought of uh, global but re uh, currently it is working more regional but in future it is going to be global in that sense because now in I understand very recently that in US they have started getting signals of Galileo. So hopefully uh, this too will become a global positioning system or global navigation satellite system along with GPS and Baidu. So, in that way and GLONASS of course, so it is uh, interpol operable with GPS and GLONASS. So, there is a very good uh, synergy which can be established between these two and uh, the Galileo system started its uh, initial services to public authorities on December uh, 15, 2016. So, very recently uh, they have started a uh, public service for and uh, we, uh, we uh, in India we do not get currently Galileo signals, but uh, once it becomes a, a truly a global system and uh, then hopefully we, we will be also getting signals from Galileo as well. So, Galileo receivers uh, basically compute their position in the Galileo reference system. So, this is another uh, they, they do not follow the exactly the same uh, ge uh, geometric system. Uh, or reference system as a GLONASS or GPS or Baidu. So, they are having their own that is Galileo reference system, slight variations in the original uh, uh, system is there. So, Galileo uh, terrestrial reference frame uh, this is called GTRF is used for the Gal Galileo navigation currently defined as international terrestrial reference frame or ITRF of 2005. And, uh, uh, this uh, there are uh, uh, as in this uh, figure there are stations which are shown uh, in yellow color all GNSS stations are there and then some other stations are also shown. So, these uh, stations are used for uh, referencing as well. An international terrestrial reference frame that is ITRF is a realization of international terrestrial reference uh, system which is ITRS. And this ITRS describes procedure for creating reference frames suitable for use with measurements or in near the earth surface. And now Galileo uh, this ITRS and ITRF solutions are maintained by international earth rotation and reference system services. So, IERS they maintain these uh, two systems and GTRF is defined by European space agency because this Galileo also belongs to uh, uh, ESA and uh, practical navigation systems are in general reference to the ITRF and uh, solutions or their own coordinate system which are then reference to ITRF solutions. So, this is how it is. So, if somebody would like to use signals suppose in future if we get the signals in our uh, receivers then our receivers should be capable of uh, converting these reference systems to our own system. And the difference uh, between as uh, like WGS 84 which is followed by GPS and the latest ITRF is only a few centimeters. So, there is no large difference, but uh, anyway uh, for uh, when, when we go for high accuracy estimations then these things matters a lot. So, during that time uh, for uh, during that uh, uh, such uh, occasions we have to take care about uh, uh, though the minor and uh, uh, variations in different reference system, but in normal day to day a uh, simple car navigation or other things uh, probably we do not have to uh, bother much about uh, that part minor uh, details. So, uh, uh, these uh, basically how this is Galileo started that uh, there were two satellites uh, Geob, Geob A and Geob B uh, which were launched in 2005 and 2008 uh, and respectively and uh, which were basically experimental where testing the 
the critical geo, uh, Galileo technology and uh, while also uh, securing the Galileo frequencies within the International Telecommunication Union. So, in the, from uh, location point of view also uh, these the operation basically this experiment started in 2005, but as mentioned a uh, few minutes back that uh, the it was uh, really uh, put in service in only in 2016. So, it took a lot of time uh, for all this kind of preparation and uh, over the course of test period scientific instruments also measured various aspects of uh, space environment around these orbital parameters in particularly the level of radiation which is greater than in low earth or geostationary satellites. So, all this uh, radiation or frequencies which are there uh, uh, which is emanating from different satellites may create some problems and uh, this uh, the issue about uh, uh, the uh, frequency uh, encroachment will be we will be discussing in the second last uh, lecture of this course where uh, it is now under uh, it is uh, your GPS system or other systems uh, these navigation systems are really under threat because of encroachment uh, of uh, frequencies which currently are being used by different navigation systems. So, this is very important that uh, the level of uh, radiation uh, or uh, the, the frequencies which are being occupied it is very important they should be tested before any system uh, is uh, developed in space. So, this operational Galileo satellite launch be, uh, began basically in 2011 though the experimental were started in 2008 and 5 and this extended rest, uh, across the rest of the decade so far. So, it is still being developed as mentioned that uh, still it is uh, uh, regional though it is getting uh, hopefully in US and later on in uh, maybe a complete global system. In that way it is also having 24 satellites like uh, GPS is having uh, 24 operational or part of essential constellations and then uh, plus 6 in uh, orbit, orbit spares. So, then that means about 30 satellites you are having and uh, these are positioned in 3 in circular uh, MEO orbit uh, which we have discussed what is MEO in the previous lecture and uh, this is the height at which uh, these satellites are there that is 23,220 kilometer above the earth and at inclination of orbital plane at 55 degree 56 degree to the equator. Now, as you know that most of these satellites uh, in uh, uh, medium earth orbit and uh, different constellations are making uh, different layers uh, of or you can call them as envelopes within that space. But uh, if you see the distance uh, like in uh, GLONASS or uh, uh, or uh, GPS, Navistar GPS, there is a difference of about 200 kilometer. So, here also more than uh, 1000 kilometer dis difference is there, but uh, uh, they are in the, they all put in the medium earth orbit. So, uh, in summary 24 satellites operational uh, plus 6 in orbital uh, uh, spares uh, in 3 orbital planes and or uh, this orbital inclination is 56 degree and orbit radius or the distance from the earth is 23,222 kilometer. Now, uh, this uh, first as you know that uh, the job uh, first it was launched in 2005 and then 2008 till the experiment uh, was done validation were done. Then uh, in orbit validation IOV was done between 2011 to 2012 and uh, out of these the two were successfully launched and uh, there were of course no failure and no plan nothing. But uh, in between 2011-12 four satellites of Galileo system were launched and they, the full, they were full success now currently only three in operation. FOC this full uh, operational capabilities between 2014 to 19 it was developed 18 satellites were launched uh, two had some problems uh, 12 were planned 15 are in now in orbit. So, one portion uh, this is because it was a partial launch failure resulting in two satellites orbiting in degraded orbit. Sometimes when missiles are sent uh, to launch these satellites put in their orbit 
something goes wrong and they the missile cannot reach or the vehicle and not really exactly missile but vehicle may not reach to that height or that distance which is originally intended. So, uh, that is why it is uh, called the degraded orbit. It is not in designed orbit, but uh, uh, in the lower orbits. So, then life of that satellite and utilization of such satellites become uh, very less. Now, Galileo basically initial services became available on 15 December 2016 and uh, the uh, constellation system completion schedule uh, next year, so in 2020, hopefully it will have a complete constellations of uh, 24 plus 6 in a spare. And Galileo navigation signals provide uh, coverage at all latitudes. So, it is of course intended uh, for uh, completely global system and Galileo navigation signals will provide a good coverage even at latitude of 75 degrees uh, north and which correspond to Norway north and most of these and northern tip of Europe and beyond. The reason is because it is a uh, European uh, system developed by ESA and many European countries are in higher latitude region like Norway or Denmark and uh, Sweden and therefore, uh, they, they want that uh, it should provide full coverage uh, to that part of the earth. So, that is why it is all uh, designed and planned focusing mainly on Europe. And uh, uh, as you know that the large number of satellites together uh, with the carefully optimized constellation design uh, plus the availability of the three active spare satellites per orbital plane. So, there are six uh, total spares are there will ensure that uh, this uh, the Galileo system uh, even a, in this uh, there is a loss of one satellite should have no uh, discernible effect on the user. So, that is why you know. Uh, spares are put in the orbit. So, whenever uh, one satellite out of uh, say 5 or 6 is becomes non-functional, then uh, users will have signals from uh, many, many satellites. As you can see in this uh, uh, animation that uh, and uh, focus on this part where we are seeing that uh, for the same location and when earth is rotating. Uh, you know how many number of satellites can send signal to that location as you can see that the values are between 12 to uh, 10 to uh, 15 or 9 to 15 maximum. So, maximum number of say, uh, say, maximum number of uh, satellites which will be sending signals to that particular position is 15 and minimum in certain locations in certain situations you may get only 9, but 9 is also sufficient to get a 3D position as we know only 4 uh, minimum 4 number of satellites are required uh, more the satellite better the accuracy. So, minimum uh, minimum number of satellites from which you will get the signal and position can be estimated in case of Galileo system it is going to be 9. So, but which is in that way is very well designed system. Now, uh, there is a very important uh, part which is now being uh, thought and implemented with the all GNSS systems about search and rescue. That means the uh, uses of these signals in case of emergency or natural disaster and other things. So, Galileo is also in that direction and Galileo uh, provide a global search and rescue that is SAR function based on operational uh, COSPAS SAR set system. So, that is a very, uh, very big advantage of having uh, such a, a plan for a, a, and a, this is a, this is also uh, intended for global search and rescue. And so, satellites are therefore equipped with a transponder uh, which is able to transfer the distress signals from the user transmitted to regional rescue coordinated centers and which then initiate a rescue operation. So, this uh, in uh, through this uh, add on instrument on uh, such uh, GNSS satellites uh, will provide us this uh, facility for global level search and rescue operations. So, uh, as uh, also in the previous lectures I have mentioned that nowadays satellites are not being launched only for one single or sole purpose, they are being launched for multiple purposes. So, if there are geostationary satellites, these geostationary satellites mainly used to be only for communication but they are now being used 
like in Indian system or in Chinese system, they are now being used uh, for uh, navigation as well. And not only for navigation or not only for communication, but they also keep grabbing images every half an hour or 15 minutes depends on how you want. And then uh, the weather related things can be monitored. If there is a cyclone which is developing uh, within the footprint of that satellite, uh, that can be monitored. It is being done. And uh, the more latest thing is about this uh, search and rescue operations. So most of these now satellites in future uh, will have these functions available because they, uh, the signals from these satellites are available all the time 24 hours globally and that is why these operations can be done. And as you can see, uh, you have seen in previous uh, animation that uh, minimum number of uh, satellites which would be available to a single receiver is 9 and maximum is of course 15. So if uh, such signals are available then help and rescue can be provided in case of emergencies or natural disasters. And at the same time, the system will send a, a response signal to the user and then informing him that his situation has been detected and the help is on the way. So when somebody is lost in mountain or forest or other things, then these systems will also uh, send signals. So uh, naturally, the uh, handheld devices or whoever is using have to have those kind of capabilities within in that so that they can translate these signals so that the correct message is reached to the person who is in trouble. So these things are being incorporated and of course in near future we will be having all these capabilities also. And this feature is new and is considered a major upgrade compared to existing systems. For example, existing systems like in GPS or GLONASS, uh, these were not there but now uh, the new systems are getting and GNSS systems are getting uh, these uh, search and rescue functions. Now the ground infrastructure in case of uh, uh, Galileo is there are two control stations. We have already seen the uh, that uh, space uh, segment. Now in the control segment there are two uh, uh, control centers are there and uh, which uh, and then have which have been implemented in the Europe and uh, then uh, you are having basically purpose of these two uh, control of satellites and platforms, uh, the navigation and uh, to achieve the mission management or uh, control these satellites. And the data provided by these uh, global network of 20 Galileo sensor stations which are spread all over the world uh, which are also these are uh, these uh, Galileo sensor stations, GSS in green dots, which you are seeing is spread over. And uh, uh, there are some other uh, centers are also there uh, for uh, communication network and other things uh, which are there. You know, these when, whenever uh, if a country is intending for a global, uh, global uh, navigation system, uh, then they have to have these at least uh, uh, these uh, you know monitoring stations all over the world in order to maintain uh, that system. So uh, slowly, slowly Gal Galileo is also going in that direction. And this uh, global uh, control centers uh, which are in uh, use uh, data from sensor stations basically to compute the integrity information and uh, to synchronize the time signals of all satellites with ground station clocks. As you know, the uh, clock they have to synchronize within the satellites in all satellites and then also with the ground stations. So these stations, control centers are doing that job and uh, also these stations are doing the exchange of data between control centers and the satellites which perform through uplink stations. So there are uplink stations in every GNSS systems are there. That means uh, that uh, 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 all, all monitoring stations cannot uplink the data. So for uplinking there has to be some other uh, facilities must be there. And uh, master control station uh, may be uplinking station but uh, for global systems uplinking stations are required in other parts of the world as well. So that is why generally they are in multiple maybe two, three, four 
uh, spread word over uh, for uplinking the data. So that uh, when because if there is only single uplinking stations and uh, if a satellite is not in reach whereas correction have to be provided in the orbit then uh, the operators have to wait for uh, that time that when satellite will come in the reach of that uplinking station then correction will be done. So in order to uh, minimize this uh, time uh, many multiple uplinking stations are established. So Galileo is also having multiple uplinking stations and uh, this Galileo control six, uh, segments are uh, functions are basically to control and maintain the status which is uh, in uh, normally in most of these constellations which we have discussed so far and configuration of uh, uh, satellite uh, constellation uh, to predict ephemeris and satellite clock evolution how the clock is functioning and keep the corresponding GNSS time scale through atomic clocks and uh, then to upgrade update the navigation messages for all the satellites. So, if anything has to be done then messages are passed to all satellites of that GNSS system. Uh, as a, as a, I was mentioning that uh, see these are the sensor stations are there and there are multiple uh, uplinking stations are there here, one here, one here and uh, one here and of course in, in different parts. So, th they are spread. So, this system and uh, ground segments the system orbit and signal accuracy is controlled by ground segment uh, consisting of basically two ground control centers are there and uh, these control centers they are mainly in the Europe and then located in uh, Overf for phone and uh, Fusino for satellite and uh, mission control and then five telemetry tracking control stations are there uh, which is shown in this map in yellow dots and uh, then uh, Kiruna, Koru, Nomia, Santemari, Reunion and Radio. Uh, so, at uh, these uh, five uh, telemetry uh, or uplinking stations might be there and then several worldwide distribution missions for uplink stations are there which we have already touched and several worldwide distributed reference sensor stations GSS that means global uh, Galileo uh, sensor stations are also there because uh, the intention is to ultimately have a global system therefore all different types of such stations have to be there as you can see in South Korea, in uh, China and in Washington and in uh, Colorado, uh, Kola, uh, Carboda and South Africa and uh, other parts of the world they are having and uh, these GSS stations and uh, data and decimation network between all these geographically distributed locations that is the purpose of uh, overall ground segment. The la after space segment, ground segment then we come to the user segment of the Galileo as you know that uh, basically it is uh, consist of uh, uh, Galileo receivers and uh, their main function is to receive signals, determine pseudo ranges and other observables and solve navigation equations, estimate position and uh, put uh, bring coordinates and provide a very accurate time because time is also being used from these GNSS systems for different purposes. So, different types of services are there from Galileo, some are already there, some will be coming in future. So, one is the open access navigation which will be available without charge for use by anyone with appropriate mass market equipment means uh, mass market means simple uh, receivers and uh, which will have simple timing and positioning down to 1 meter which is itself is a very good uh, accuracy uh, with a single receiver system without uh, bringing differential or any other thing. Whereas uh, this is uh, another service which is encrypted that means someone has to pay there will be charges fees and this is called the commercial navigation and uh, which will have accuracy of 1 centimeter. And this is, uh, this is achieved through SBAS uh, which we will be discussing later because uh, the service uh, which is coming in order to improve the position accuracy is coming through SBAS and uh, uh, the whoever is, but the company whoever is providing the service through SBAS that is satellite based augmentation system and then your accuracy improves 
and very significantly. So from 1 meter to 1 centimeter and a guaranteed service for which the service providers will of course charge money for that. Then safety of life navigation and this is again open service for applications where guaranteed precision is essential, integrity messages will warn of errors. So that, uh, sir, uh, that will be also available, safety of life navigation and uh, this is uh, should have been continuous availability even if other services are uh, disabled in future crisis, the government agencies will be main users. That is continuous availability even if other services are disabled in the time of crisis. And so this will be mainly for European countries who have invested a lot of money for this system and of course as already we have mentioned that the search and rescue operations. So for that uh, this is system will pick stress beacon locations feasible to send feedback and confirming help that it is on way. So that kind of service will also be available hopefully globally very soon. Now the signal characteristics of uh, Galileo, the bands which is it is being used, the Galileo navigation bands as shown in this uh, uh, violet color is the E5A, E5B which you are seeing here and of course E6 and E1. So these, uh, these bands are being used of uh, your uh, uh, L band, uh, part of uh, L band, it is lower L band where E5A, E5B and E6 and upper L band which is E1. There are of course uh, some overlaps, some part will be there like uh, L5 it is also there and in case of GPS L1, L2, L5 they are there, Indian system is going to be focusing only on L5. So GPS navigation bands are shown in pink color and then there are other uh, players in this uh, or users of these frequencies are there. Um, but uh, the danger is not yet uh, um, because it, things are going in coordination in case of GNSS but the danger will only come when we go for in mobile technology is say from 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G and then encroachment of these frequencies might be there. But uh, uh, this uh, anyway for time being the Galileo navigation signals are transmitted in four band, four frequency bands as highlighted 5A, 5B, E5A, 5B, E6 and E1 all shown here in the violet color and these uh, provide a wide bandwidth for the transmission of Galileo signals and uh, the Galileo performance are different for each service. For Galileo open service, no specific requirements of integrity are applicable which is free of cost. Then performances for horizontal positioning accuracy would be 95 percent for a dual frequency receiver and uh, are 4 meter, 8 meter for vertical accuracy. So vertical accuracy is also going to be improved if uh, someone uses the dual frequency uh, receiver. Uh, currently our mobiles, most of these mobiles are using a single frequency but there are mobiles which are uh, coming in market which will be using dual frequency. So in that case the accuracy will improve, horizontal accuracy will improve by 4 meter and uh, vertical accuracy by up to 8 meter with the availability of uh, service 99 percent time. So that means almost every time you are having this uh, Galileo open service available. And in case of Galileo public regulated service that is PRS, the performance requirements include horizontal and vertical accuracy, integrity, continuity and time to alert the different service levels. So that will be also there and availability of these service should be 99.5 percent for both services. So this is what it is expected that almost every time you will have these services available. So this, this is what I wanted to discuss about uh, Galileo and uh, uh, as uh, men already mentioned uh, that uh, currently it is working in a limited manner but by 2020 it is, it might become a completely global system. Currently we, like in India we are not getting signals from Galileo but we expect that soon we will be uh, getting signals uh, in, the, uh, in India from Galileo as well. And this brings to the end of uh, this discussion on Galileo 
and as usual i am leaving with the cartoon thank you very much Thank you.